Now our procedure, after the knife has been heat treated, I usually uh, go on ahead and go back and put four to 600 finish, this is Damascus, um, put a four to 600 finish on it and get it ready to, to uh, etch it. Um, what I'll do, got to make sure that all the grease and all the nasty is off, so we, we use simple green because it's a degreaser. I guess I'll do that over here. Okay. Just kind of get it cleaned off real good. I had it in oil so it wouldn't rust. Just make sure that it's good and clean. Then I'll put it in water. I don't know if this is the cleanest of water, but just kind of get all that off of there. You don't want to put that in your etch. Okay. I think I'm going to see if I can't get this to stick. We've got a little uh, stand over our buckets, and we've got like, you know, we'll put like a little thing on there to hold it so you don't have to stand there and hold it all day. Okay, then you basically just put it in the etch. No, no, didn't have to dry it off, no. Just put it in the etchant. What we do, we'll just leave it in there for a few minutes and pull it out, and I didn't get that brush, hang on. There's a toothbrush back there. What you do is just, to f just leave it in there for a few minutes and then pull it out. I don't wanna get nothing on this. Because what you basically wanna see is that it's going to take and that you don't have any grease or anything. If you've got any kind of grease or anything on this, any oil, it'll actually show up shiny and it won't etch. It won't take the metal off. So what I'll do is just take that out, check it out real good, just kind of brush it to make sure there's nothing else on there. And where, where the, it's hardened, if you look at it, where it's hardened, all right, it's going to be dark like that because it's hardened. But see, it's already starting to take, and there's no shiny spots, so I don't have any grease or oil on there. Okay? On the spine, there's no shiny spots, so it should be a good etch. I'll let you see it. See, it's already starting to, to pull that off of there. There's no, and it would be like a real shiny spot, and there would be... There would be nothing. It, would, it wouldn't take, you know. Then when we do that, okay, since we know that there's no nasty on there, we'll just go on ahead and put it back in there. Let's see if I can get that where it'll just stay. Yeah, I guess that's good. And actually just, uh, if you want a real deep etch, we usually leave it in for an hour. I'll take maybe take 10, 15 minutes and then I'll take it out and I'll scrub it real good, you know, to get like the excess steel that's, that's there. And uh, then just set it for an hour if you want a deep etch. Basically, lately we haven't been doing a super deep etch because you actually, uh, when, you, when you put your hand across the blade, there is, there's actually a, a, like a tension there. You know, you can feel it. It's, it's, it's almost sharp. So we haven't been putting that deep of an etch on it. Uh, then after that, usually after the etch, you take it out and uh, clean it real good. And uh, we got the ammonia, yeah. I guess. But what we have is a, it's a, it's a five-gallon bucket of water and baking soda. Baking soda stops the, the action of the etchant also. Mm -hmm. So today we're just going to put is the... That's your neutralizer. Yes, that's a neutralizer. Baking yes, baking soda and water. And I'm not sure what the mixture is on that. Uh, Jerry can probably tell you that. <laughs> but... Uh, We've got the ammonia today, that'll, that'll stop it too. And then we just put it in WD-40 and let it sit there for a little bit to um, you know, absorb it in so it don't rust. And it's etched. And the toothbrush, you use that often? Um, well, I'll take it out probably maybe 15 minutes and just clean it off good. And then usually you don't have to. I mean, you can maybe every 15 minutes, take it and just brush it off a bit, see how it's, it's coming. If you want a deep etch, you know, I would say leave it in for an hour. I wouldn't leave it in for over an hour because in an hour we get a pretty deep etch on that. Um, 15 minutes will do, maybe, you know, 20 minutes. 
is, is, is a fairly decent etch. It'll bring your pattern out really well. Yeah, basically, if you want a deep etch, an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah an hour. But yeah, that's <laughs> basically what, what it is. That's basically what we do. Um, the thing is, we, the steel that we use is um, W2 and 203E, and that's the nickel. Well, the nickel, the, the etchant doesn't attack the nickel. That's why it, it, that pattern raises up the way it does, but it takes the steel. So we can check it. Yeah, see, basically you're getting the same thing. It's just... Um, it's just going to be a little deeper. It's basically going to be the same thing, but your sure, your pattern's just going to be a little deeper. And like I say, that black on there, the real dark, that's that's where it was heat treated, and that's where it's hard. How did you do the heat treat? Uh, I could take um, I can sate night and clay the back. Okay, and uh, we've got uh, pots, big heavy pots, and uh, we'll take it up to um, 1380, and then it sits. It'll it'll sit in there for probably about 10 minutes or so, and then it just ramps down until it's. I think. Uh, I can't remember how many degrees it does, but it takes all day to, to do this. So that gives you a real good No, that's not long. true. I'm talking about the annealing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm confused with that one. Um, no. Uh, 14, 1450. Yeah. And then you just sit it in there for about 7 to 10 minutes. Let it get up, before, you know, by critical. And then we, we've got Parks 50 that we... Um, douse it in but yeah that's put it back in there and let it so clean that off but yeah we don't want the back to be uh, real hard so we uh, we clay it clay it like from here on up through here of course you want your tip to be hard so and usually there should be a hamon on that because when I when I clayed it I put little things down there and done that but then once you get it uh, hardened then uh, I've got a little uh, yeah toaster oven and uh, about 375 for an hour and let it sit and then you let it totally cool that's tempering it and then I do it again for another hour at 375 and then we do the test of course and drop it and if it don't break, it's fine. <laughs> the first time Jerry done that to me, it scared me because we had done a blade uh, for my son. He's in the service. And uh, I come in from work, and he had heat treated it. And I says, oh, wow, that's really cool, you know. And he says, yeah, he says, here. And I went to grab it, and he let it go. And I'm thinking, oh, my God. And it was fine. It didn't break or nothing. The tip didn't break or nothing else. So it's like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, they do. I know. We got a bunch of little chips in the concrete, but but that's okay. Our blades are fine. <laughs> but after you know, when this is done, like I say, we'll use the the neutralizer and uh, spray it with that. And usually, we'll have another tooth. We've got toothbrushes for each little step that we do, because uh, you don't want to really mix this once you're neutralizing it. So you don't do any sandpaper or steel wool or anything on this to, for the etchant? No. So no. once, once that's out there, it's done? Yes, it's done. In fact, the blade will be totally ready to go when you etch it because then you don't want to touch it with anything. Um, if you get a little rust on it, you can take steel wool and pull it off, but you don't want to touch it with sandpaper because you'll have to re-etch it. Then you've got to take it all the way down again. I messed one up one time. I messed a blade up one time, and I had to do that. I had to take all the sandpaper off. But yeah, that's uh, that's basically yeah. Then what uh, the next procedure then is getting your uh, the guard fit up and you know just doing the rest of the stuff. And uh, we usually use Damascus for the guards and the butt caps and all that stuff. So um, those will be totally finished. 
They'll all be fit up, they'll be all be sanded and everything else, and then you etch them also. Yeah. And the same procedure. Same procedure. Well, yeah, if if you've got something that's hard, it's gonna be, it's gonna come out black. It's gonna be darker. Yeah. Yeah, but there's no reason to heat treat them because you're not gonna be cutting with them or anything. So yeah. Yeah, no, we've never never done that. Now, when you're all done, are you still going to be able to see a hormone on that thing? Yeah, you should be able to. Actually, I think that's when you really see it. I don't have much on this one, though. Yeah, but see, you can see, even now, more of the pattern. See where, where it's been in there longer? Oh, yeah. Yeah, see, you can see more of the pattern because it pulls it out more. <laughs> 